Hey there, welcome to day 996 of What's She Up To Now. Sharon Horn Nelson here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Sharing uh, some of the lessons I've learned, some of the big old, old bad mistakes I've made, the, the, the pitfalls and the holes that I've jumped in or dove in head first uh, as I've been on my journey for the last few years, at least, you know, 996 days, much longer, not much longer, but probably eight months longer. I think it took me at least eight months before I would do a, a video, before I do a live video. I should go back and watch some of the early ones. I have never done that. I know that's a, a confession, but I'm afraid that if I watch the early ones, delete, 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 I delete all of them. Even the ones today, every day when I do a video, I probably shouldn't admit this, but the first thing I think when I, when I click finish is, oh my God, all the things that were wrong with it and guess what we're, it's live video there's always something wrong with it right it's my hair my face my makeup my earrings my outfit whatever who cares there's always things we could judge about it but that's why I don't watch my own videos I don't go back and watch them could I should I would that help me improve yeah uh, will I do that in the future yes will I have somebody help me and critique me and and help me to, to do a better job presenting what it is that I'm trying to share? Absolutely. On this particular platform or this particular segment? No, this is just me, raw and unedited. Because it's it's like if I had a notebook and was journaling what I do every day, I do it every day here to keep track of what I'm doing. I have vision challenges and, and writing things down has kind of stopped working for me. So I have to find something that does work for me. That's, that's what our life is about. It's figuring out what works for you, figuring out what works for me. And this is the, the method that I'm using to document what am I doing? How, how's it working? What's going on? Uh, so today, three, three videos I, I produce every morning and actually five. One is on my, actually I do something called the 365 Day Fun Challenge where I started doing that three years ago now, two years, well, well, this year and two years prior. I started doing one thing every day that scared me, that got me out of my comfort zone because I knew I needed to start doing video and I was I was like everybody else. I didn't want to do it. I was like totally resisting, making up excuses, finding all the reasons in the world that I couldn't, shouldn't, and would not ever, ever, ever do a live video. Now I think I'm up, I'm probably at around 4,000 videos that I've done in the last three years uh, on different subjects, different topics, some super long, some webinars, you know, two hour webinars, some short, some web classes, some live Q and A's, all different things, right? Uh, and how do, you, how do you do that? You just do it. it. It's scary, but you just start doing it. And as you're doing it, you get better at it. As you're doing it, you figure it out. Well, today, um, get up and go, or the fun challenge was about glitter. Now, I personally really, really like glitter. I think either you love glitter or you hate glitter. And I'm a glitter gal. I like glitter. I like glitter. I like puff paint, glittery puff paints. I like sparkly, glitterly nails. Uh, I think for about the last two years, almost every time I've gotten my nails done, I have picked a glitter polish. Now, secretly, I probably started picking the glitter polishes because it narrowed down the selections and the possibilities. Have you been to a nail salon lately? You go in and they have like, a thousand different colors to choose from. I mean, it's like picking brand colors. It's hard because there's so many amazing colors. But I like glittery nails, but there's less glittery choices than there are all of the choices. So it helps me to, to scale down and narrow the amount of possibilities and the amount of considerations that I am going to you know look at. It, it, it narrows my choice. It's like going to the grocery store and going to the anything aisle. You know, it used to be there were like one or two or maybe three choices of everything. Have you been in the pizza, frozen pizza aisle lately? There's like entire aisles of doors, probably 30 doors of different types of frozen pizza. It's ridiculous, right? The proliferation of everything. And I've been saying this for a couple of decades now. The proliferation of everything can be overwhelming. And sometimes we just... We need to find ways to narrow our choices. And one of the ways I do it is I'm going to wear sparkly nails. So I like glitter. So glitter was the fun challenge today. And I asked you either you love it or you hate it. Um, it's funny. My my granddaughter and I, she loves glitter and she loves slime. I love glitter. Her mom hates glitter. I don't like slime. I don't, I don't know if I can say I hate slime. I say I hate slime, but I don't really hate it. I just don't like it because it's gooey and messy. Now, for a chemistry gal, because I, I studied a lot of chemistry in school and in college. I love chemistry, but 
I don't like slime so much. So slime at her house, glitter at my house. That's that's our compromise. Um, so it was about glitter and either you love it or you hate it. Supersize your business today was about jumping down someone's throat. Now, I personally have a lot of experience with that on both ends of the spectrum. I used to be a lot more volatile than I am. And I would, in my past environments and situations, jump down people's throats sometimes. Sometimes they would irritate me and I would, you know, reprimand or jump down their throat or yell at them. I don't do so much of that anymore. Maybe to my kids, uh, but not really. Mostly they get me by jumping down my throat when I mother them or mom them too much. Because, you know, moms tend to worry. Moms tend to warn you about possible negative consequences of any of your choices. And so sometimes that irritates them. Um, bosses, teachers, uh, strangers, strangers will jump down your throat, right? You ever been yelled at in traffic by somebody because they think you, you know, offended or did the wrong thing or tailgated them or, or turned when you're, God forbid, were you in their lane when they wanted to be in that lane? That's that's like the ultimate offense. They're shaking their hands, screaming, and, and you, you can see them mouthing obscenities. And you're like, okay, sorry. That's an example of somebody jumping down your throat. <clears throat> I guarantee that in my marriage, I definitely jumped down my ex-husband's throat on time, occasion and, and vice versa. I felt like I was on the, the receiving end of a lot of throat jumping back in the day. So now, not so much. I think that over time and as we get older, we, we either go one way or the other, right? Either you get more curmudgeon -y and grumpy and negative when you get older, based on your, your worldview and your life view and the experiences you've had, or you get mellower and better and you just let things flow. And I think I, I like to think like, there's certain things that get me riled up is watching a, um, a series on vaccinations and the vaccination and vaccine industry and just horrified yesterday. I'm sure we'll continue watching it. It's probably 15 hours worth of, of documentaries on that. So we'll watch it. And then I'm going to go watch The Truth About Cancer. I already know I'm going to because I know that one's going to horrify me as well. <clears throat> I wish somebody would do The Truth About uh, Chronic Pain because that one's just as horrifying as the vaccination one and the cancer one and, and what goes on in our world that we average people have zero knowledge of, zero information, and zero clue about and you know, it's kind of like politics, right? There's there's so much that we don't know. There's so much that goes on. And to the tune of billions and trillions of dollars. And, you know, we're scrounging to be responsible for our electric bills and our, our water bills. And other people are, are just squandering away billions of dollars. It's it, Or um, it, I, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. Don't want to go there. So um, <clears throat> jumping down someone's throat. Have you done it? Has it been done to you? I, I would think just about everyone on the planet has had somebody jump down their throat or yell at them or scream at them for something or other during their lifetime. I would think it'd be a very special cuddled person that's never had anybody yell at them or, or get mad at them or, or scream at them about something. Um, even those of us who aren't very controversial get yelled at and screamed at and picked on sometimes. So that was uh, the supersize your business. And also then my uh, daily, I hop on Facebook Live on my profile and I, I actually pre-talk about the idiom for the day that I'm going to talk about in supersize your business. And I started doing that, I don't even remember how long ago, probably as long ago as I've done the, the idioms. And I think today was day 596 for that. So I'm almost at 600 idioms that I've shared, which... I'm going to have to find a new source for idioms because my book is almost out. It only has, I believe, 600 idioms in it. And if I'm at 596, I'm, I've got like maybe four more in the book to go. And then I'll think of something else or I'll do something else. Started doing it because I was moving and I wanted to provide content every day to the people in that group. But I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about. And then it got to be kind of a fun game where <clears throat> can I figure out how to tie this to business in on my profile, I just talk about the idiom in general and what it means to us as humans or as, you know, in my life, how it's impacted me. Maybe share a couple examples or an example. If I share a couple, it gets too long. If I share one example, usually that's enough. <clears throat> and then I ask people, how has this impacted you? And the same thing on Supersize Your Business, but with the Supersize Your Business, I tie it to how you can use it to grow your business. Or in some instances, I actually say, absolutely, possibly don't. Do this. Don't do this to your people. Don't do this to your employees. Don't do this to your customers. Don't do this to yourself. That's a bad idea, right? There are very few situations in business, if ever, 
that you want to jump down someone's throat. I say if somebody is in imminent danger and going to do something that could hurt themselves or harm themselves or maim themselves or kill themselves. Uh, I had a guy and one of the very few times I remember ever jumping down anyone's throat in the, in the Italian food business was I had a guy that was getting ready to stick his hand in the mixer. Now, I don't know about you, but an 80 horsepower mixer, it's going to mangle that guy's arm if not take it off. And he was getting ready to stick his arm in the mixer to, to flick off a little piece of flour or egg or filling or something. And I screamed across the, the floor at him to, to watch out and not do that. Was that jumping down his throat? Absolutely positively. Was I jumping down his throat because I was worried that he was going to harm himself? Absolutely. So there are situations when it's appropriate, but most of the time not, right? So I, I shared a better way, a better framework, a better way of dealing with and how I actually deal with it when I want to jump down someone's throat. I still want to jump down people's throats on occasion. Sometimes I want to jump down people's throats. So I wanted to share a framework for how do you deal with that so that you're not doing it when you when you could choose a better reaction, when you could get a better result and a better outcome that you want. Uh, so that was Supersize Your Business and Profile video. So that's three videos. So on my Pajama Grandma page, I do the, the 365 Day Fun Challenge because I committed to doing that on that page. Uh, during COVID, I let go of my Pajama Grandma persona. I used to show up in my pajamas every day. If anybody's watched my earlier stuff, you'll know uh, for at least two years, I was showing up in my pajamas. And I was doing that, of course, intentionally, but I found out the vast majority of the people don't get that. My point was, I was illustrating, you can be successful online and do anything, even in your pajamas. And that was, you know, to emphasize the freedom of your choice to do what you want, when you want, where you want, with whomever you want, wherever you want, wearing whatever you want. And uh, I, I came upon it as as part of a, an event I was attending uh, back in 2018. I was like, okay, I'm going to this event with 3,500 super duper strong marketing people. Um, and I, I was trying to find a way to differentiate and show up, but still show up as me. And, and that was me. I realized that I was like spending half the day literally in my pajamas because I didn't have to get dressed. I didn't have to get up. I didn't have to get dressed. I didn't have to go to the shop. I didn't have to go to a job. I didn't have to really get up and go anywhere except to my office to do what it was I was going to do. And I could do it from the couch. I could do it from the living room. I could do it from the front yard. I could do it from the beach. I could do it from the park. I could do whatever I was doing um, remotely, which was, I thought it was really free and really fun, but I did find I was spending a lot of time in my pajamas. Uh, Get Up and Go Challenge today would be my fourth video. And that was about, it's day 20 of our, our 30 plus day challenge. And we talked about the P in the SOAP framework, which the SOAP framework also ties into the jumping down someone's throat. Um, so the P in SOAP stands for progress. Am I making progress? Am I moving toward or away from what I want? And how do we know? We figure out ways to measure what we're wanting, what we're paying attention to, what we want to achieve. So for example, I was sharing um, financial, the, the whole framework from a financial standpoint this time through. And the P of progress for me is either I'm I'm hitting or I'm moving toward that financial goal. It's an actual number, a dollar's number, or I'm not. I'm either moving toward it and it's, I hit the number or I don't. I either hit the number or I don't. And we get to choose the way we want to measure things. How we measure things is entirely up to us. And we want to pick measures that motivate us and make us want to move toward them, right? We don't want to make and choose measures that make us feel bad. And I shared the example of um, weighing yourself. Whenever you want to lose weight or stay in a certain shape, they say, pick a, pick a goal weight and then weigh yourself every day. And I am, I will admit I did that for years and I found it really frustrating. It made me feel bad to step on the scale every day. I didn't like doing it. It didn't make me feel like something I wanted to move toward because a lot of times you'll step on the scale and one day you'll weigh something and the next day you might weigh five pounds more. And it's got nothing to do with how you look and how you feel it's just a number on a, a measuring device and so i substituted an outfit or a, a pair of pants or, or something that i wanted to wear as my measurement i either fit into it and was moving toward it it got looser and i could zip the jeans or i couldn't and that felt better to me than looking at a number every day so we have to pick a measurement 
that will cause us to pay attention because what we measure matters, but it's got to be a measurement that we want to move toward or that makes us feel positive about measuring it. Um, if, if I have a money goal and I'm moving toward it, that makes me feel good. If I have a, a physical shape goal and I, I tell myself I have to weigh myself every day, that is going to play on me mentally and emotionally and spiritually and physically because it just the measurement itself, the act of measuring it doesn't make me feel good. And if I'm doing something that doesn't make me feel good, I'm always going to be going in the direction I don't want to be going. So um, that's one of the ways I figured out a different way to measure if I'm moving toward what I want that feels good for me versus one that makes me feel bad, right? Maybe because clothes are more forgiving of, you know, if you had too much water or whatever the day before. So uh, all about measurement and the importance of measurement to help us know if we're making progress or not. And then the fifth video that I do every morning is, of course, this one. It's just journaling and, and sharing what it is that I'm doing, what's working, what's not. So that's it. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below. If you have questions and you're struggling with anything right now, any challenge, any business, online or off question, and you don't know who to turn or who to ask, just ask. I might not know the answer, but I will know somebody or something that you can do to keep you moving toward what it is that you want. Have an awesome day, and I'll be with you tomorrow.